It's time for Broadway Names with Julie James. Broadway Names with Julie James. Where Patty and Mandy and Phoebe and Sheena talk Foxy and Velma and Shay and Davida. Witches and Newsies and Mormons and Spiders start out as strangers and end up confiders. The Broadway Names. Hi, I'm Patty LaPone. Broadway Names with Julie, with Julie James. Julie J. Hey, I'm Raul Esparza. It's Hugh Jackman. Oh my gosh, Julie, I'm telling you everything. I love uh, it. Yeah. It's Broadway Names with Julie James in the studio at Sirius XM on Broadway, and I am delighted to be welcoming to Broadway in his debut. Any minute now, it's Tom Hiddleston. Welcome. Thank you you so much. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it is. I mean, there's nothing like a Broadway debut, even for a veteran actor like (laughs) yourself, (laughs) I'm imagining. Tell us, tell us. It feels feels like a dream. Yeah, I've always, um, you can't help but just cast your mind back to being a child and dreaming of being an actor and people talk about Broadway and the tradition here and the community and the, the, the standard and the quality of the work and um, it uh, it has not come into my life before this moment so it's very very exciting uh, well I'm excited for people who might be listening right now who are big Marvel fans big Avengers fans to learn they may not know that you are actually a a long time uh, stage actor and yes that's where I started ultimately um, I uh, I trained as a stage actor I spent the first four or five years of my career on in the theater um, and um, oh, you know, the, the film staff has been amazing and one of the great surprises of my life mm. and I've loved it and I, but I never expected it and, and um, strangely enough I think some of my theatrical experiences have really carried me through those film experiences. I bet, I bet. Um, so, yeah, theatre's in my bones, it's in my blood. I think it, it was the thing that really turned me on to acting in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe in it. Mm. I just believe in the theatre. I think it's an um, extraordinary, powerful um, form. Yeah, and, and do you remember when it kind of came and called to you, the siren call of the theater? <laughs> Was there a crystalline moment yeah, that that happened? There were a couple, sort of a couple of years in my teens. I, I don't know if it could, I could crystallize it with one experience, but I was in a, in a school play production mm-hmm. when I was about 13 of Guys and Dolls. <laughs> and I've, I don't think I've ever had more fun. <laughs> Before or since? What role? What role? <laughs> oh, I was in the comp- I was in, okay, the in the ensemble. My, you know, it was a, the eighteen-year-olds are playing yeah. the men. Okay. I was a, I <laughs> was, a, I, was a baby, I was a baby boy, and I was uh, just happily dancing in yeah. in Havana. Yeah. Um, and doing the crapshoot dance and all that. <laughs> uh, but I also I I went to the National Theatre in London a lot at that time, um, and uh, I saw a lot of different things. Mm. Um, I saw some you know more traditional family shows, I suppose, but I saw some quite grown-up things, and I remember. Um, one particular production um, directed by Richard Eyre of John Gabriel Borkman, uh, the Ibsen play with mm-hmm. Paul Schofield, who was one of the last great uh, stage actors of that generation, the Olivier Gielgud, Richardson mm-hmm, generation. Mm-hmm. And Vanessa Redgrave playing his wife and Eileen Atkins playing uh, the sister. And I never forget the experience of walking into the auditorium not really understanding as a 14 year old boy the rituals of people saying hello and mm. and the kind of the collisions of perfume that sometimes happen <laughs> in, in a theatrical foyer <laughs> because when you're a child you're really aware of that right and um the rituals of people having a drink or whatever but then after two hours or three hours of the lights being out and being in the same room 800 people or 12 100 people being in floods of tears in recognition of the same experience mm. and that I kind of really I really clocked that this was a this was a powerful way of bringing people together that actually in an audience people arrive as individuals and mm. they leave as a group with a shared understanding of something new yeah. or something they've always known and I still believe in that Woo, that is powerful <laughs> that to, I mean, first of all, it's powerful today, but it's powerful mm. to think that you uh, sort of garnered or gleaned that that lesson at, as a teenager, that you were able to sort of, you know, pull that together. It's... Well, I, was th- I don't know I was thinking. Teenagers think a lot, don't they? <laughs> I certainly did. 
um, but I can I can see I could see then and I still see now that the theatre is a, a place where society examines itself, mm -hmm. celebrates itself. It doesn't have to be heavy. It can right. be light. It can be extremely upbeat and moving. And um, but it's a place where we kind of reflect each other. Um, so true to ourselves, you know. So we investigate things. Yeah, yeah. It's something that changes even in my many years of theater going. It changes, mm. right? I learn different things about it. These days, I've been thinking about it a lot as a meditation. Mm. You know that there's. Um, I think especially in this age of technology, yes, exactly. it's a, a chance to put your devices mm, away, mm. and yes, please do, uh, <laughs> but put them away yeah. and and just be. And how often these days do we have an opportunity to sit for maybe two hours and just mm. be with what's in front of us and experience that fully and completely mm. without the being pulled in 20 ways and yeah, all no, the distractions. We, we live with so many distractions, so many demands on our attention. And I think the, uh, the privilege of being in the theater is that actually all of us in the audience are focusing on one single thing. Right. And hopefully it is a reflection on the experience of being alive yeah. that actually allows you to investigate something more deeply and more profoundly and that you recognize a shape of being alive on the stage which you can relate to yeah absolutely oh it's so, such great passionate theater talk with tom <laughs> hiddleston true. you know this is tom you may not know a sh at its at its heart a show tunes station oh, and okay. then we break out for you know from time to time for these kinds of conversations so just to get a little show tune variety in there I'm sure i'm gonna tip my hat to your guys and dolls okay. uh, to to what may have captured <laughs> your your initial germ and love for the love of the theater Theater. Yeah. Uh, think when you hear this song, think of Tom in the background as a 13 year old. <laughs> and we'll be back to talk about your Pinter play. Great. Music inspired by one of the first theatrical experiences for Tom Hiddleston. And he is about to make his Broadway debut in Betrayal, one of the most important Harold Pinter plays. And I was so fascinated when I uh, heard that this was coming to Broadway, but maybe even more so because it was part of, um, what was the, it was called Pinter on, P Pinter at the Pinter? Pinter at the Pinter, yes. Um, I'll explain a bit about that. The, formerly the comedy theater, in the West End in London has been called um, the Pinter uh, Theatre for I think the last 10 years, uh, either just under or just over. And Jamie Lloyd, our director and his production company, last summer decided to stage some of his lesser known plays. And so it was called this, the, the Pinter at the Pinter season. So lots of short plays, radio plays, lesser known works or one act plays, which he wrote when he was younger, kind of all staged with a great cast. We had this sort of amazing run of people in it, David Suchet, Lee Evans, Tamsin Gregg, Martin Freeman, Celia Imrie, people who'd worked with Pinter or knew him, coming back to celebrate his work. Um, and I was lucky enough to be asked by Jamie to finish the season with Betrayal. I suppose a longer, you know, considered one of his masterpieces. But it was an extraordinary run of about 10 or 11 months of exclusively Harold Pinter work at the Pinter mm. Theatre. Um, and a great celebration of his legacy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's great that we can take sort of the, you know, maybe maybe a bit of the of the centerpiece uh, of that and and bring it over here for Broadway audiences to get their chance to experience it. Mm. It's a it's an interesting play. What have what what can you tell audiences here listening about what they what what they can expect well, from this particular production? Um you know, briefly, because I don't know how people probably know it, but but it's about it's a three-hander, um, Robert, Emma, and Jerry. Robert and Emma are married, husband and wife. Robert and Jerry are old best friends. Jerry was best man at Robert and Emma's wedding, and Emma and Jerry have been having an affair. Complex. It's called betrayal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna live up to its name. Yeah. Uh, and it is about these three complex relationships: the marriage, the friendship, and the affair, the romance. And and that actually those three relationships are almost dependent on each other. Mm -hmm. And that when one of those relationships breaks down, so does the other two. And I think 
Jamie Lloyd had an ex- it's not spoiling anything because it's the first thing you see when the curtain goes up is I think we're the, we're the first company ever to stage it this way is that the, all three actors are on stage um, for the duration of the piece oh wow um, and there are a lot of scenes between two people but having the presence of the third character physically in the space mm-hmm. shows you that actually that character is in the mind of both people all the time. That in an affair or in a betrayal of any kind, you carry those um, that third object in your mind, that yeah. third person. Um, you're not truly free. Mm-hmm. And 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 Pinter is so clever in the way he constructs it because it's not simply the betrayal of the husband by the wife. It's the betrayal of friend by friend. It's a, it's a play about knowledge um, and truth and trust. And if you know the truth, you may hold more power, hmm. um, especially if you withhold the truth. Um, and so he plays with these power dynamics very carefully um, because these are three people who ultimately at one time loved each other very much and they're now hurting. Mm-hmm. Um and I think it's uh, it's also classically Pinter in that he's dealing with quite profound experiences, but it's very witty mm-hmm. and very funny. Yeah. Um, and he Pinter always writes about the experience of human pain with a wit and a kind of uh, sophistication that is actually makes you laugh. Um, I suppose if you don't laugh, you'll do the other thing. Yeah, yeah, how true. (laughs) Um, But I find it an endlessly fascinating play. We played it for 13 weeks in London. Uh, I still feel like there's more to discover, more to... um, Because he's dealing with something very profound, these high-stakes things. As human beings, you know, we we want to connect with each other. But sometimes we do things that drive us apart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this play is about. It must be a really juicy experience as an actor to mm. be able to have uh, spent those 13 weeks yeah. and mining into what's there because it is so rich and so stacked in mm. in the pinterness of mm. it um and then to and then to get another chance which i assume you didn't know at the time that those 13 weeks concluded in the no i thought that did, was the that was it that's it yeah and so now you're going to get a similar amount of time yeah. here in new york to 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 explore even so does it continue on oh yes and 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 um that's as i suppose that's the thing that i know will continue is is zowie ashton and charlie cox who play emma and jerry also in their broadway debuts in their broadway debuts are extraordinary actors um in individually um in their own right but the three of us feel we just feel very um connected and responsible for the delivery of this piece um and because we're all on stage at the same time it's something there's an intake of breath between the three of us mm. before we go on say so, you know we have we deliver this together and the charge between the three characters is never broken mm. um and i find that because the audience is different every night sometimes they want to laugh more quickly mm-hmm. or sometimes they just want to listen mm-hmm. more quietly that never gets old that for us yeah. is is feeling that live experience yeah. feeling how people are connecting in a different way totally i'm so intrigued by this notion of of the three of you being on stage together the whole time is there a connection point that you make like every night before the show like before the show begins behind the curtain is mm. there is there a pre-show ritual of any kind to kind of yes <laughs> yeah, we we're, we're all there um I don't know. We we do, we do have a um, a moment of of just you know, being together and connecting into it, and it's an extraordinary ninety minutes of this material is is quite intense. Mm-hmm. But I think that's part of its um, that's part of the play's power. Yeah, is it's a it's a very rigorous, intense look at these kind of these moments when the most intimate relationships of our lives break apart Mm -hmm. and how that can be shattering and and have repercussions further down the line and we know that that it's our responsibility to deliver that yeah wow wow this is a lot to think about (laughs) um i'm going to give us yet another show tune opportunity i'm I'm enjoying this like little grab bag that i'm that i'm creating (laughs) this one uh this one is going to be from Stephen Sondheim's company, mm. because 
Pinter is so signature that he's even referenced in the lyrics of That's this right. song, a Pinter play. Music inspired by Pinter on Broadway Names with Julie James with Tom Hiddleston, who's about to do his own matinee, a Pinter play. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You'll be doing more than matinees, though, won't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, will. Um, I don't think that it is a spoiler either. It's well documented, and of course there have been many productions of, of Betrayal, um, that it is told in the reverse. Yes. And... I thought it would be f fun to ask you about, um, you know, when when you're doing screen work. You know, mm. This is one of the compare contrast things that fascinates me about theater actors, and then you know the medium of film or television where we're not telling a story chronologically, yeah. um, and what that does to an actor and how what what tools in their in their kit they're using mm. for for doing that for mm. not telling a story in in its chronology. Then in theater, we're used to an, an evening where we hear, you know, the actor and the audience are both getting a story in its completion from beginning, middle, and end. Mm. But then here's a different twist for betrayal, which is that uh, you are telling a story in order, but there's there's a twist. There yeah. there's the reverse. So does that? What does that? What does that do for you as an actor? Is it an interesting device to tell uh, a story? It's fascinating. I because you can lead. You can lead the audience through it, and then you find that they get ahead of you, or they get ahead of the character. Um, and Pinter is so generous because he lets the audience in on the knowledge before some of the characters are. Mm -hmm. And so actually, he lays it all out in the first two scenes. He says, so this is what's happened, and this is what you're going to now watch people discover live. Hmm. And so I think the audience start to look forward to, aha, uh -huh, so... In, in, my, in my case, I play Robert, the husband, the publisher, and it's revealed very early on in the play that he's known about this affair for four years. And the audience then start to understand, oh, now we're going to get to live this in reverse and we're going to see that moment mm -hmm. and how he's lived with this knowledge and how this knowledge has affected his relationships with Emma and Jerry and how he's used that knowledge as a, as a tool somehow to... He's withheld. It's his only way of, of holding on to power mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. somebody who's been betrayed, ultimately. Um, and so the construction of it, I think, is really interesting because it allows... It, it's rather like a Russian doll. You sort of mm. you know it's going to get smaller, but you're interested in what it looks like mm. when you open it. <laughs> That's a very good, yeah. good analogy. Yeah. Very well, well done. You pulled that, yeah. pulled that out. Use that again. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. And how long does it go on for? Like, when right. do you get to the smallest, the, the smallest doll? Right. You know, how long is yeah. this going to go on? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and people like it's. Uh, I don't know how people have seen it before or have never seen it before. I think. Um, it's still extremely profound, extremely accessible. Yeah. Relatable. Yeah. This is exciting. This is very exciting. What are, what other than the play are you excited to be in New York for a little bit of an extended period of time? I assume you don't often get to just sit in a no, in New York City for I've, 13 or 14 no, weeks. No, I've never lived in New York for longer than two or three weeks at any one time. I'm so excited. I really am. I love this city. Um, it's got, it's got, it's, it's, you know, I might be the first or the last to say it. it has the most unique energy of any city in the world. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to the seasons, you know, the changing of the seasons uh -huh. from summer into fall into yeah. winter um, and uh, settling in, you yeah. know. Yeah. I think uh, for, for me that that would appear to be, especially for a play like this one, to, to again, get a chance to really, you know, sink into that mm. and, and be with it for the amount of time. It's not like a, you know, a, a, qui a quick, you know, very short no, run. No, yeah, it's, it's, I think we're six, six, 17 weeks. Yeah. Um, which is a good long, it's, it's limited. It's not, you know. It's not forever. It's not 30 weeks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or 30 years, like Phantom yeah, of the Opera right. or something. I don't know if I could do it for yeah. 30 years. Um, <laughs> and hopefully you get a chance to see some other theater while yeah, you're, so which is tough thing. to do when yeah. you're on your own performance yeah. schedule, but there are ways yeah. of finagling. So maybe other shows do different matinee days or something, but I know the community of Broadway is is world-renowned, and just to be, you know, to be invited into that community feels like a huge honor. Yeah, so yeah. I'm really excited. Well, I know that the community 
community is thrilled to be having you, and it's going to be an exciting time. And it's sneaking up on us. Previews begin August 14th. That's right. And so uh, you really will have sort of a summer of fall and uh, mm -hmm. beginning of winter yeah. on Broadway. So that's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's very it exciting. Is, yeah. Well, we're thrilled for you, and um, everyone go see betrayal and uh and celebrate the broadway debut of tom hiddleston thank you congratulations so much. thank you gosh i'm very excited now if i wasn't before <laughs> <laughs>